Hello, it's July 1st. I'm super excited. Summer Splash Readathon has officially started. My name is Katie. I'm going to be doing weekly reading vlogs during this month for the readathon, and we'll have a special edition for the Summer Ween readathon that is also happening this month. So I'm super excited. I've actually added some stuff to my TBR because of the summer ween situation so i'm gonna be reading the year of the witching i just picked this up at my local indie and i'm super excited about it and also horror store by grady hendrix which has been on my tbr for a few months now so super super excited to read both of these i'm actually going to be going on a trip this month because my parents are moving so i'm going to visit them in minnesota to pack up all the stuff that i have left there and bring it back here to north carolina so they can enter that new phase of their life without all of my stuff holding them back. The other thing that I picked up is the Buddy Read, which is I Kissed Shara Wheeler. I found this at my local indie and I was really excited that they had it. And actually the woman checking me out said that she really loved it and that it ended up being more twisty and turny than she thought it was gonna be. So I am very, very excited to read this. The things that I am currently reading as of day one are, I did find a book that is set entirely in the summer, I'm pretty sure, and it is Happy Hour. I started reading it before July 1st, but I'm gonna count it because I didn't know it was set entirely in the summer and I think I'm gonna be hard pressed to find another book set entirely in the summer. It also has yellow on the cover. I'm also reading it as an audiobook, so it would count for the book set, book read entirely outside because I'm reading it while I'm on walks with the doggy over there. I'm gonna try to do the surfs up prompt because I am also currently reading The House in the Cerulean Sea, which has a body of water on the cover, so it covers that prompt. I'm this far into it already. Again, I started reading this a few days ago, so technically I didn't start it all in the month of July, but that's okay. <laughs> so far, our main character has gotten to the orphanage, the house, and he's meeting all the kids. <laughs> and one of them is the Antichrist. <laughs> and I thought that was hilarious. And I really like how this book is being set up. <laughs> Sully's playing in the corner. Our main character also has a cat, which I'm really enjoying because I love when books have cats in them. I don't know why, but authors tend to really like cats. I guess cats are better than dogs for sitting quietly and doing things. Um, seeing as Sully is currently making lots of noise while he plays and my cat is asleep in her window perch. So I guess it makes sense that readers and writers are more cat people than dog people. Interesting. Let me know if you're a cat person or a dog person down below. Do you agree with my assumptions? Okay, so that's Surf's Up. The next one is Pen Pal, so that's to write a letter to a friend. So I'm gonna do that this week. And then it's Roots, which is to reread re a childhood favorite. I'll be reading this. Well, technically it's two books, Tricky Dog and Precious Dog, and I'll be reading that to Mr. Sullivan um, whenever he's in the mood to read. So I'll vlog that for you and that should be fun. <laughs> and then we're also doing Get Lost and that's to go to a place you've never been to before. And then the other one is Heat Waves and that is to read a book set entirely in the summer and that's going to be Happy Hour, which I already told you about. That's what's on deck for this week, House in the Cerulean Sea, Happy Hour and Tricky Dog. And then we're gonna be writing a letter to somebody and going to a place we've never been before. That's my update for you. I will see you when we're doing something readathon related. Uh, come on. Gotcha, come.
Good morning. I'm in a hammock, so sorry if this footage gives you motion sickness, but it is now Saturday and I am about halfway through the house in the Cerulean Sea and I am really, really enjoying it. I absolutely love all of the magical children that we've met and also Linus, our main character. He's like learning that he has to let go of his preconceived notions and it's just a really sweet story and I'm very, very much enjoying it. Other updates I have for you. I finished Happy Hour and I really loved it. That book is Manic Pixie Dream Girl vibes all the way through. And if you like on Carly's content, she was the person who I saw reading and recommending this book and it matches her vibes perfectly. So if you like watching her content, I think you'll like it. It's just about two girls who are moving to New York. They don't have visas, so they can't get like real jobs. So they have like a stall where they sell clothing. And then they're basically just like trying to have as good of a time as possible while still trying to get money to eat and pay rent. Okay, hang on, Sully's rolling around in the woods and he looks like he's having the time of his life. I really hope he's not rolling in poop. He's having a great time back there. So I read that and now the audiobook I have switched that out for since I finished it, I need something to read on walks with the dog. So now I am reading The House Across the Lake by Riley Saker, which I wasn't expecting to be available for my library, but it was. I guess I'm only reading books with bodies of water on the cover now because House in the Cerulean Sea does. I'm reading a little bit the guest list, but I wanted to see if I was gonna like the Riley Saker because I haven't read anything by them before and I'm really enjoying it. The first chapter really reminded me of For Your Own Good, and that's like one of my favorite books. So I'm really enjoying it so far, and I usually don't like like domestic thrillers, but I'm really enjoying this one. Okay, those are all of my reading updates. My plans for today are basically to just read all day and then hopefully we can go somewhere new and do that get lost prompt as well. So I will take you along with me. Mr. Sullivan is very much enjoying his time outside. Hello. He's a good boy. Let's plan for today. I'm going to keep reading and I will check in with you later. Hi. So you remember when I said I hope he's not rolling in poop when Sully was rolling around in the backyard. Well, he was rolling in poop, so Sully had a bath. <laughs> I did not take any footage of him having his bath because he gets very scared and very nervous um, when he's in the bath. And I also have to blow dry him completely dry because he's so fluffy that if I don't completely dry him before I let him go about his day, his, he can get a lot of mats and they can like, yeah, heads up, this is kind of gross. Um, they can like adhere to his skin and cause him to have wounds and stuff. And that happens quite a bit with him um, because he likes to chomp at his butt <laughs> and then he like makes mats for him. So I have to dry him completely. So I bought this like stupid high velocity hair dryer uh, for dogs. So. That took forever and he has been shampooed and conditioned and he is the softest he's ever been. There, I got so much fur off of him when I was blow drying him with his high velocity dryer. I was literally covered in fur. I was wearing that black shirt. It was not black anymore, it was white. I had like clumps of fur I was pulling out of my eyes. It was pretty horrendous. So no reading has been done, but I felt the need to update you because I feel like a completely different person. <laughs> Oh, I didn't take any footage of Sully while he was in the bath because he gets scared and I didn't want to prolong his bath experience by filming him, but I did take a video of him while he was snoring really loudly after he had his bath, so I'll input that, I'll insert that here.
Hello, it is Sunday night, so I've done a very poor job of keeping you updated. But I do have lots of things to tell you. I did do lots of things today. Uh, Sully and I cleaned our house, and then we had people over to watch the Formula One race. And it was incredible. If you're a Formula One fan, please let me know in the comments. <laughs> Sully has chosen now to chew in his toy. It is a lovely possum which I'm not allowed to show you. It was to look, but not touch. I have done a lot of reading as well today. So what happened was I finished the house in the Cerulean Sea and I loved it. It was so lovely. And there's a quote in the cover that says, I loved it. It is like being wrapped up in a big gay blanket, simply perfect. And you know what, V.E. Schwab, I feel the exact same way about this book. I loved all of the children that we got to meet. I loved Linus's character arc. I loved everything about this book, period. Yeah, that's all I have to say. Uh, I really, really loved it. If you're looking for a very fun escape, it feels very summery too. It's always sunny and blue skies in the house in the Cerulean Sea. And it was just a really, really touching story. And it had a lot to say about parenting. Like the way that Linus and Arthur talk to the kids is just, do you mind? <laughs> it's really, really lovely. And these kids obviously have had a rough time because they are magical and the world does not see them as children. They see them as monsters and it's really horrible the things that have happened to them and of course this book has a lot to say about our society and the way that our society has prejudice and hello so this book definitely has a lot to say this is the toy that i've been delivered so yes there you go i really loved the way that linus and arthur and zoe like parented these children and talked to them because like one of them is the antichrist you know, one of them has tentacles, one of them is a dwarf. They're all these magical creatures and they are kids. They do the things that kids do. And the way that they parent them is just so loving and honest. And I just really, really loved it. It put a huge smile on my face. It made me tear up. It was a great start to this readathon. So I am very, very happy that I finished my first book physically of this readathon. And I think the next one is I Kissed Shara Wheeler because I'm looking to stay on the happy train and Casey McQuiston's books always make me happy. Oh, I am also now halfway through The House Across the Lake. And I have to say, I think I really like Riley Sager's writing style. I am definitely hooked and I think I really like the way that the story is structured because I think if if we didn't have that first chapter, I think I would have DNF'd because there is so much mundanity that is happening. This book reminds me a lot of Rear Window and Rear Window has been mentioned in the book. So like it's self-aware and it just feels even more than rear window like okay i'm in the same house the whole time nothing is really happening but because i have that first chapter i know how crazy the story is going to get so i'm hooked and i'm excited to see how we get there so i don't mind the fact that we're taking a long time to get there i think this one is good for me to read on audiobook i do have a hard time reading things physically when there's not like a lot happening i guess so this book is good for me to read on audiobook because i'm reading it while I'm doing other things, like going on a walk. So I'm still enjoying The House Across the Lake. Our main character is an actress and she's kind of like, she's an actress, her husband has died and she's like very much struggling with an alcohol problem. She meets this woman who lives across the lake and she's a retired model basically. And they're both kind of like commiserating about how hard it is to be famous and that part just like really rubbed me the wrong way not that i don't care like i understand that it's difficult to have your life on display but it just fell a little flat for me the way that it was described there wasn't much more beyond the oh i don't didn't like being a model because everyone just knew me for my body and like yeah obviously but there wasn't any more nuance to it than that and there was like a joke about oh i just wanted to eat pizza and it just i don't know 
it rubbed me the wrong way. Um, I didn't like that bit, but otherwise, I'm interested, I'm intrigued. I do feel like this story has been told before, like in Rear Window. So I'm interested to see if there's any twists in what's going on, or if it's gonna be the same story that I've watched and read before, but we'll see. I'm sure Riley Sager's gonna do something. I've been given another toy. This is the one I have been blessed with this time. Sullivan, would you like me to throw it? No, oh, it was a gift, lovely. So that's how I'm feeling about the house across the lake. Okay, I'm gonna stop rambling and start reading so I have more things to talk to you about. Hi, um, I'm sitting in a parking lot because I'm just picking up Chipotle for me and my friend, but I've been listening to The House Across the Lake on audiobook and I swear like three gigantic twists have happened in the seven minutes it took me to drive to Chipotle and I'm freaking out. Do you remember when I said, I was like, oh, like I've heard this story before. Like, I hope there's gonna be a twist. There was a twist. <laughs> there were many twists. I saw one coming and I was like, okay, that's cool, that's fun. <laughs> and then it got really weird and really crazy and I'm loving it. I'm having a fantastic time. I'm going to bring my friend Chipotle and I don't know how I'm going to not finish this book right now. I'm shook. It's good. Have you read it? Let me know. What'd you think? What'd you think of that twist? It's a little crazy. I thought, I thought this book was going to be one thing and um, I've been pleasantly surprised. It's very crazy and very good. So I'll let you know when I finish it. Hello, it's Tuesday and morale is low today. I did not sleep very much last night because Sully was up being stressed about the fireworks and so I was up being stressed about him being stressed about the fireworks. I didn't sleep, I'm also having awful cramps today so <laughs> morale is just very, very low. So I thought we could try to raise morale by opening some books because I put an order in and they just got here. So. I'm on my lunch break. We're going to try to bring some happiness into my day because I am struggling today. Um, also, before we do that, I did finish The House Across the Lake on my morning walk with Sully. And I just have to say, this book went places I was not expecting at all. I really thought this was going to be like a rear window type situation, retelling. I haven't read The Woman in the Window, but I'm assuming it's a similar premise and I would say the first two-thirds of the book were exactly what I was expecting. Um, we're trying to figure out what's happened to this woman and there's other side things that we're also feeling a little suspicious of and trying to figure out what happened with those but this is basically the main mystery. We're switching between now and before and trying to figure out how we got to the crazy things that are happening now. <laughs> then the last third of the book happened and as you saw in my clip in the car I was shook. <laughs> I was very, very shocked about this twist. And there were some red herrings being thrown, but it, they all happened so quickly. Like, I kid you not, the seven minute drive it took me to get to Chipotle from my house, three things happened and two of them were like false starts. And I enjoyed the last part of the book a lot because a lot of things were happening. I mean, some of the conversations were a little bit off for me. I don't think this was a perfect book, but it was a wild time. So I did, I did, I did enjoy it. Uh, I don't read a lot of thrillers, so take that with a grain of salt. So those are my thoughts on The House Across the Lake. I had a good time. I think if I had to give it a rating, I hate rating things right now, but if I had to give it a rating, I think it would be like a three and a half, four for me. Okay, now I have to catch you up on what happened yesterday because I didn't film any of me talking to you and a lot of things happened. I went to my friend's house and I read a good chunk of I Kissed Shara Wheeler, about a hundred pages, and I'm enjoying it. 
YA is not my thing, but I trust Casey McQuiston with my life. So we'll see what happens. So far, reading very much like a John Green uh, novel and the book is self-aware. And our main character even makes a joke like, who to share, I think she is getting her own John Green book. <laughs> so that was funny. I've been enjoying it. I really like Casey McQuiston's writing style and I'm having a good time. It's YA. I'm not the intended audience, but I'm still having a good time. Then we went to an ice cream shop, which I'm going to count as my get lost prompt because that was somewhere I have never been before. It was really, really cute, but it was also really busy. So I didn't really film much of anything, but I got this really delicious berry sorbet. The place we went to is called Two Scoops Creamery and it was very, very lovely. And I was basically at my friend's until the sun went down and the fireworks started going off. And then I came back to be with the dog because I knew that he does not like fireworks. This is his first 4th of July. So he's a little on edge about that. Okay, let's do this. Um, I think most of these are books that I bought for Summer Ween, so you're gonna get a little sneak peek at what I'm gonna be reading for that. Okay, so the things that are not for the readathon are, I finally found So You've Been Publicly Shamed. I've been trying to pick this up used for a long time. And then the other one I have that is not for Summer Ween is Mr. Penumbra's 24 Hour Bookstore. And I heard someone talk about this recently. Um, basically, someone gets a job at a 24 hour bookstore and there's some weird stuff going on at this bookstore and like a secret section, I guess, um, in the bookstore. So I'm excited to figure out what that's about. The first one I got is My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing. I really, really loved For Your Own Good and I have been wanting to pick up more from this author for a while now and I thought that this readathon would be the perfect time to do that. So I'm going to pick up My Lovely Wife during the Summerween readathon. I think I'm gonna do a try a chapter thriller vlog, so stay tuned for that. The other one I got is Neil Gaiman's The Graveyard Book. I think this one is less like outright horror, more just spooky. I think it's a boy, his family has, well, I mean, when you read the synopsis, it's kind of crazy, but like his, I think his whole family has died and he's being raised basically in a graveyard by the ghosts that are there. So that sounds like a lovely time. I have never read anything by Neil Gaiman before, but a lot of people really, really love his writing. So I am very happy to pick it up. Okay, and then the last one I have, I'm equally excited for. <laughs> Again, this one is not in great condition, but is The Passengers by John Mars. I'm gonna see if I can get this sticker off with my goo gone. But again, I have read from John Marsh before. I really loved The One and I've been wanting to pick up more from him before. This readathon has made me just pick up everything thriller and horror and I should probably chill on that because there's no way I can read like 10 books in a week. So, well, that was good. That put a smile on my face. These are all of the bookies that I just got. I just have one more book that I need for this readathon and that is Lonely Castle in the Mirror and I found it on Book Depository so that should be here soon. We'll see what happens with reading today. I don't have high hopes. I'm exhausted but I'll let you know if I have an update for you. I'm about to do the precious dog, tricky dog thing with Sully. Um, so I'll see that in a second. But I just got an incredibly exciting piece of mail and I got Bargain Bin Rom-Com by Lena Dorms. And this is, she's my absolute favorite YouTuber. And I was so, so excited when I heard she was coming out with a poetry collection. I pre-ordered it right away. And I'm so excited about this, you guys. Um, I actually got an autographed copy because it's one of the first 500 pre-orders and I just, I'm just so excited to read it. So next week I will be reading this in my reading vlog, so stay tuned for that. Oh, I'm so excited. It's been a great week of reading, you guys. Enjoy me reading a book to my dog. Have a great week. Oh, bye. Hello! 
It is Thursday at like 5.15ish. I'm done with work for the day and I was actually hoping to film this on my new camera because my new camera arrives today and I will finally be able to film and see myself in a viewfinder. I am currently using my front facing camera because there's just no way I would be able to get Sully and I in the shot um, <laughs> using my phone if I wasn't using the front facing camera. So if the quality is a little lower on this shot, I apologize. Also, if the audio is off, I apologize. I have my lapel mic clipped to my phone. A um, little crazy, but we are doing Precious Dog Tricky Dog. And as you can see, Sully has some energy. So let's have chicken so that he'll, you know, vibe with us. Can you sit? Sit, please. Good job. Hey, Sully. It's story time. Do you want a story, Sully? Are you ready? This is a story about a dog who knew lots of tricks. Can you do tricks, Sully? This tricky dog called Belle knew all the usual tricks like sit. Good job. High five, crawl, and even bang, play dead. Her person had taught her how to do those things like I taught you things, Sully. But guess what, Sully? Belle had made up other tricks that she had made up herself. You might know these tricks too, Sully. One of Belle's favorite tricks was pretend she was deaf when her person called her. You know that trick. Another was to pretend she'd hurt her paw. That one always meant lots of cuddles and treats from her person. And Belle found that if she scratched the door and whined, her person would get off her chair and open the door so she could go out into the garden. You see, Sully, Belle had even taught her person some tricks. Belle's doggy friends weren't impressed by her tricks. They thought she was an OTTPP, an over-the-top person pleaser. But one day that all changed. Do you know why, Sully? Let me tell you. One day, Belle was at the park with her dog friends and they were having fun running around and playing chase and tease with a stick. Suddenly, Belle's friend Spider disappeared. Yes, disappeared. One minute he was there and the next he wasn't. Belle took charge right away and raised the alarm by barking at her person. What is it, Belle, said her person, and Belle, barking, told her about Spider being missing. Unfortunately, her person didn't understand what Belle was saying, so Belle took off on a search. Spider couldn't be far away, and he wasn't. He had fallen down a rabbit hole and was whining. Belle nearly fell down the hole, too. It was only her bigness that stopped her from slipping down. Belle, as you know, Sully, knew lots of tricks, and she thought about all the tricks she knew. Yippee! She had an idea. First she barked to get her person's attention and then sat up and begged. She knew her person loved that trick, but her person just laughed. Well done, Belle, she shouted. Belle thought again. Maybe she'd save Spider herself. She looked around and saw the stick they had all been playing with. She picked it up and took it to the hole. She turned around until the other end of the stick was down the hole. She began tugging at it to get Spider to grab it. He was a terrier, so she knew he wouldn't be able to resist, even if he was frightened. She felt a tug back, and like a person fishing, she held the stick firmly between her teeth and ran backwards. Yes, backwards, Sully. Can you do that? Spider flew out of the hole, still holding the stick in his mouth. Belle let go of her end of the stick, but Spider wouldn't let go of his, even later when his person tried to take it from him. The other dogs stared at Belle in awe. Gosh, Belle, your tricks really are something after all, said her beagle pal, Freddy. We're so glad you knew so many tricks, said her new Australian shepherd, Australian shepherd friend, Skye. Will you teach us some tricks, Belle? All her dog pals asked. All dogs have their own special tricks, said Belle. But if you'd like to learn some other ones, just have your person teach them to you. Do you want to learn new tricks, Sully? And that's the story. I hope you have enjoyed our story time with Sully, who is now getting some much needed belly rubs. I have also finished the guest list, which is right here. And I am, I haven't read any more of I Kiss Chair Wheeler, but I'm gonna have to end this vlog here because it's currently Thursday night and this is technically supposed to go up tomorrow at noon. And I have a lot of editing to do, so I need to stop filming and start editing. Yes, my thoughts on the guest list. It was a wild time. 
I have to say it read very much like an Agatha Christie. Something I thought was really interesting is we don't actually know very much of what happened until like the very end of the book, which I thought was going to be boring because it's a very, very slow burn, but I actually really, really enjoyed it. And once we got to like the last 50 pages, I was just hooked. It feels, you know how sometimes in a thriller it feels like you're getting a lot of useless information, even though like things eventually come together. This one I was, I was very interested in what was going on. I think it was a good one to read on audiobook. Again, like The House Across the Lake, sometimes there were things that were happening that Yes, it's interesting, but you don't quite know how it fits into this bigger story yet. <laughs> and so it's not, excuse me, and so it's not as enthralling, I guess is the right word. Did you have fun? So yes, it was good to listen to audiobook on that. And then I ended up I, switching to the print version when it was in the more intense places because I wanted to read it faster than the audiobook. Um, hey, buddy, do you think you could move a little bit? so I can see the camera. Okay, so to recap, this week we read, where are all the books? Happy Hour, which got us the set, book set completely in summer, prompt, as well as yellow on the cover, which is also, this one also yellow on the cover, and to read a book with a body of water. And then we read The Guest List, which also yellow and also body of water, so we get double points for that, I guess. Um, and then we also read The House Across the Lake, which also body water on the cover. So we just hit that prompt three times this week instead. And then I'm about 100 pages into I Kiss Cheryl Wheeler, and we read Tricky Dog with Sully, which is a childhood favorite. And I think next week we'll read Precious Dog. Um, so you can, if you enjoyed it this time, you'll get to read the other story next time. Yeah, that's gonna be it for this week. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm really, really excited to get this new camera and be able to put out some really high quality content for all of you. So thank you so much for being here. If you liked this video, Sully and I think you'll like that one. And if you wanna subscribe, <laughs> please stick around for more chaos with me and my gigantic wolf. Bye.